Welcome everyone. It's the 18th of November 2022. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today's agenda, action items, Jenkins elections, the next long-term support release, next Friday, November 25th, and the Thanksgiving blog post. Any other topics you'd like to put, like to put on the agenda? Yes, um, a small discussion on GSOC 2023. Okay, all right, so let's put that up at the top. GSOC 2023, okay. Any other topics? Okay, then let's go ahead with, with these topics. So action items, we've shifted one action item to Kevin Kevin Martin's the archive the docs mailing list and switch to community.jenkins.io uh, because I was making no progress and Kevin has been not has been elected as the documentation officer. So I, I get to offload that. Um, I, I have a new action item to create a pull request to document document the web application server support policy. This is things like Tomcat, um, Glassfish. Uh, Wildfly, uh, etc. WebSphere. So these web application servers have interesting complexities, and the reality is we don't have any core developer that is actively using one or actively testing it. And so mm. we need to tell people, hey, the web application server we support is the one we ship. Everything else, you're on your own. Any questions on the action items? Cool. Okay, Google Summer <coughs> Code 2023. Diraj, what was your question or what, what, what topics? Yes. So before that, um, can you explain that Tomcat, Glassfish, uh, Wildfly again? I'm sorry. Oh, sure. You what, bet. What's so, the context? Yeah, so, so a web application server is a is a piece of Java software that's able to host multiple other components underneath of it. So what, what happens is you run a, a web application server, say Wildfly, what, what's known, what was previously known as JBoss. Uh, you run this mm -hmm. thing and it then hosts a bunch of other web applications, WAR files, under it and it presents a, an HTTP interface, a web interface, to its consumers for multiple applications underneath this single thing. Uh, it's, there's, a, there's a thing called Java EE, which is a so Java Enterprise Edition, which is now becoming Jakarta EE under the Eclipse Foundation. And these web application servers commonly implement subsets or the entire specification of this Java EE or Jakarta EE. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. This is interesting. Because um, the Wildfly application is managed, uh, maintained by Red Hat, right? I contribute Correct. to it. This hack to fest as well. Few test related um, contribution. So that's how I wanted to know more about it here. That's yes, all. yes. Well, and, and there's, a, there's an interesting connection between Wildfly and Jenkins or CloudBees. Sasha Labore, the uh, CEO at CloudBees, was one of the original creators of JBoss. Wow. So, so yeah. So, yes, there's a, there's a history of this, this thing in, in lots of places. But... Right now, it's not actively being tested or actively being supported by any of the core maintainers of the Jenkins project. We believe it works in certain configurations, but not being tested or checked. Oh, so it's not maintained by anyone from Jenkins, right? That's the issue. No, it, it's not that it's, it's, it's that the Jenkins project does not test. Oh. Does not test Jenkins inside those containers, mm. those uh, application servers. 
Hmm. Ah. Okay, that makes sense. And because we don't, we, we really, we are not willing to declare tier one support, tier one agreement, et cetera, tier one plans for something we don't test. Sure, makes sense. That's all. All right. So did that address your question? Definitely, thanks a lot. All right, Google Summer of Code. Yes, about this one, uh, when I go to get a channel and at the GSOC SIG channel, I at this timeline, we see lots of newcomers coming in the channel and saying, hey, how do I get started? Can you tell me? I know this, this, this tech, tech stack, um, which are the projects that I can contribute to. So it gets, uh, these questions are very relevant. But the, we need to reply to each one of them, to be fair, because each of them is a new member and deserves um, a reply. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it does get redundant. Uh, so I was wondering, like, what do you think uh, about a blog post for them? But then I am answering myself. But then we do have blog posts in place which lists down the projects to contribute to, right? So then, for example, the Hacktoberfest, uh, during Hacktoberfest, we did have a blog post, which listed down the projects the, where we can contribute to. So, but do we need to have a GSOC specific blog post uh, uh, so that we can just simply share the link with these people whenever they ask, hey, how can I contribute? You can just say that, hey, look at this uh, blog post that will uh, guide you. So what do you hmm. think? I think? I think that's very reasonable. Why not? Uh, you could also, if if a blog post is too much, is more hassle than you, is more, more challenging than you want, you could as readily post, create a page on community.jenkins.io that tries to describe, hey, I'm a brand new contributor. How can I contribute? And, and then you could, you could say, all right, here, do this, do this, do this. I think any one of those would be great. A blog post that lists the projects and how to contribute sounds good. Specific focus on Google Summer of Code contributors, yes. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds but fun. you're looking, I mean, right now what we're seeing are people who are shopping the open source projects in preparation right. to apply for GSOC, right? Correct. So these are GSOC wannabes. Correct. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. these are is potential potential GSOC, GSOC applicants, right? And what we need to do is we, we want to encourage them to get involved Uh, and we accept that that most of them will say they are interested and then do nothing. <laughs> right. Right. It's just that, that's that's okay, right? That's no harm. But that really, I think, means, Diraj, to your point, we don't want to invest an awful lot of time writing each one of them a personalized answer. Uh, because really, if we retain, if one in 10 of them or one in 20 of them actually make a, a contribution, that's a, that's a good ratio. That's a, that's a positive ratio. Yeah. I agree. That's why I thought, like, instead of just replying a customized reply to all of them, mm -hmm. we can just direct them to something where they can just look at it by themselves and then decide. Right. I no. do. Okay. We know how old school I am. I like the idea of the page that has the steps to this, to this, to this. Mm -hmm. And it's up there. The problem with blogs, blogs would be great for somebody to do a blog on what it was like for them to be in GSOC. Mm -hmm. And that would be great and what they had to do. But blogs tend not to get maintained. And they tend to get old, but they sit out there and they're sort of mostly true, but there's a couple of things. So 
Whereas if it's, you know, straight steps on the web page, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And you should do this, but you don't have to or whatever. Yeah, so, well, so, so let me offer an, a different angle then on how, how we might do that. Um, we could, we could rotate through a series of plugins um, and custom answer each each request with a different plugin and the same modernizing the same improve a plugin tutorial. Ah. So Diraj, just thinking through this is me me offering an idea. You're, it's we're welcome to just reject it. But we've got ten or fifteen plugins that have been adopted by John Mark, by Bruno, by me. So we're we're reasonably comfortable that if they submit a pull request, we'll review it. Okay, so they're not going to submit a pull request and have it languish and die. But we don't want to, on each request for hey, I'd like to contribute, give the same plugin because they'll duplicate work. But knowing that most right. of them will not do any work at all, even when we tell them, what if we just had a, a rotating list that we said, okay, here's the 10, we're gonna, first answer, we give one, then two, then three, then four, and after we hit the end of the list, we roll over and give one again. If it's not already been all the way done, and, and I haven't seen any one of them be all the way done yet. Hmm, I think it's a good idea. Um, so, hmm. create a so rotating it's, it's, list, basically a, what, what do you call that? Uh, <coughs> a, a rotating list of plugins with maintainers, with willing maintainers, right? Mm -hmm. And respond with a different, with, with the next plugin in the list each time a question is each time a new person asks. And can we put a time limit on it so they don't feel like, you know, somebody gets it and they say, oh, I'm going to do it in six months and then they come back and it's been reassigned. Can we say, you know, like when this is, a, when you get this, if we don't see significant action in two months or something, it could be reassigned. Oh, or something? see, we're not, we don't even assign them. So okay. that, that, that for me is the, one of the mistakes I've made in the past even with Jenkins.io issues is assigning them to a person because inevitably in one in 10 cases, the assigned person actually does something with it. Right. It's pretty common. They say, please assign it to me, we assign it. And then nothing happens. Right. So in this case, we don't assign it. We just, we just answer with a, from the rotating list. And if we got a rapid fire request for 10, the 11th person will get the same one as the first person did. What do you think, so, Diraj? Do you, do you think that would, that would give us a chance to, now we, we still, we point them to the same page every time, improve mm -hmm. a pipeline or improve a plugin tutorial <laughs> and choose this plugin to do it. And now we know if they submit something, we've got tutors, we've got mentors ready to help them. Hmm. So your idea to present a one specific plugin along with this tutorial link is that you're, that you're specifying them to a exact plugin where you can help. So you don't have to spend time on shopping. Right. The idea, well, see one of, one of my worries when we say contribute here is they look at the list and say, that's too big a field. I have no mm. idea where to go. Right. Whereas if we tell them here is an exactly one plugin and mm. here is a tutorial that you can follow that will tell mm. you how to improve that plugin. And in fact, we can tell them there are two tutorials, right? Because tutorial one is improve a plugin. Tutorial two is read the Google doc contributing to open source. And it's full of more things. Mm. By the time they finish the first tutorial, they're probably skilled enough to actually use the second one. Hmm. And so another question is, this suggestion uh, would be an answer to the question of, hey, I'm new 
uh, how can I contribute to Jenkins, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. So, but in that case, we would need to hmm, specify that if you contribute to this task, they would need to know Java, uh, Git, Little Maven, something like that. So sometimes people, you, you can see that there are some people who just know C++, C. So would we be suggesting this task to them as well? I, th I think so. So let's, okay, let me, I'm going to take the Mark Waite history, right? So mm -hmm. I came from a C background, pure C, and only got into Java because I had to. And, and by the time I was contributing to Jenkins, I had, it was even worse. I'd gone through C and done a little bit of Java and then switched to managing. And so here I was a non, non Java programmer, but I, I absolutely wanted to fix some, fix some, add some more tests to a certain plugin because I was tired of it being broken. So I started adding <laughs> tests and, and by adding those tests after a year or two of annoying the, the maintainers with tests, they said, let's make this person a, uh, a, a maintainer to, so that so that the, the tests can arrive without us having to review everyone. Mm. So, so I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with a C programmer or a C++ programmer or a Python or a Rust or whoever deciding they want to try some Java. It's a good skill to have. If they choose mm. not to do it, that's up to them. I, you know, I don't think them walking away from, from our offering, here's, here's a way you could get involved with us. No problem. We're not hurt if they walk away, but we just hmm. keep rotating through the list of, of this queue of, of plugins. Yes, now I 100% agree. Because we cannot um, in, go back to the same problems of custom replies. So we cannot just the custom reply them based on what tech stack did they know. So I think this works. Right. Well, and, and if, if they say, hey, I, I actually many times don't care what tech stack they know, especially mm. because the tech stack that they know is not actually an indicator of whether or not they'll contribute. Many of them come in and say, I'm, I'm skilled in Java. If we were to actually test their Java skills, we would walk away in total disgust and say, I'm sorry, you're not skilled in Java. Quit saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but that's that's not important, right? It doesn't matter if they're right. whether they're skilled in Java or not is actually completely irrelevant to to they can do something, and the things mm. they can do will help them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a sheet, and Diraj, I'm going to make you and me both both editors on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see uh, plugins. Oops, cancel plugins. Uh, with maintainers, with willing maintainers. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to get let anyone with the link at least comment. And I'm going to add Diraj as an editor. So this is a test, right? And and it's a great excuse. It's it's really marvelous if a past GSOC contributor is the one saying, "Hey, this is how you do it." It's much better than if an org admin does it. If you do it, you have a, an air of credibility saying, "Oh yeah, I did it last year." And here's how here's how you could get started too. Hmm, I see your point. That makes sense. So let's see. So plug in URL. And um, last, last mentioned. So would, would that be okay if, oh, let's see, we probably need one more, uh, one more column, which is plugin name. And last mentioned to a new contributor. So if we just put a date there, That's not how it works. It's equals now, maybe. Yeah. 
know. So okay. you know about this. Okay, so the idea then is, all right, I'm going to put a plug in here. I'm going to put one in I just adopted today, Xshell. I know it needs, a do it needs uh, things added, and I am more than willing to review proposed changes. Just a minute, Xshell, Jenkins Xshell plugin. No, that's not. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's see. Plugin, do we want do we want to give them the plugin site? No, we probably want to give them the source code repository, right? Yes. Okay, so this one. And there it is. So now what we have is voila. Okay, so if, if it was last mentioned to a contributor, then all you do is rotate through this thing saying, hey, here's the last mention. I'll put, I've got five or ten others that I can put in there and then try it. Let's see if, how it works. Say, hey, here's the plugin. Use this one at this URL and take, take this, the tutorial. Use the improve a plugin tutorial. Now, one of the things that John Mark and I have been discussing is possibly we'll do an, an improve a plugin workshop, maybe in January or February, where you invite people who are interested to come and we'll tutor them directly. Okay, so that would be live, right? Uh, yeah, that was the idea, yeah. Now, because it's a tutorial, it, it's not something we can do with 50 people attending. It would be six or eight. You know, it, it, we just can't, we can't run a lab remotely with, with many, many people. We have to be, have a fairly small group. Yes, that makes sense. So when we use this sheet, um, you would be updating the more uh, list of plugins here, right? Yeah. In fact, I was just going to go ahead and do it now. If you're okay with it, I'll just, sure. I'm going to go, go look and see. Okay. All right. So git grep minus L marquee wait. Okay. So here are plugins that need attention. So now let's put that through a little bit of magic. Jenkins CI slash. Okay, oops. Sorry for making you watch me do uh, scripting. Okay, so that should give us interesting places where people can contribute. And so if I take some examples, I'm just going to start pasting these, Diraj. Watch this. So here we go. And some of them I admit I'm going to delete because there are some of them that I actually don't want to bother with people submitting a pull request for it. It's like this one, this one, this one. Here we go. Delete. OK, uh, that one probably not. It's just too complicated. OK, that one no. That one no. That one, no, not much.
much to do on it. Not much to do on that one. But okay, that's good. Yeah, uh, actually, no, this one is deprecated in May. I don't think we want to put people on something that'll be good. Good, so that gives you 15 to rotate with right now. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Delete row. Oops, oops, implied labels, nil. So back to the question, Diraj, do you think this is okay? Do you think this will work? I think so. Because it with this, we would be giving them the exact area where they can contribute. And mm -hmm. since I now agree that tech stack would not be that big of a challenge for them, so this is a good way they can start contributing. Good, okay. And we did have some success during Hacktober Fest as well, uh, when they started, newcomers started contributing to plugins. And their first question, uh, before contributing was that, hey, how do I pick a plugin? So we are eliminating that. Exactly. And I think that's, I think that's a, this, this is, this is, let's, um, we tell them which plugin to, to improve and we rotate the, the answer, the plugin the, the plug-in answer each time we give an answer. Yeah. Yes. And uh, how, how do we use it? So, for example, you would uh, copy the plugin URL of Excel plugin and share it with the uh, contributor on the channel. After that, you would update the timestamp right Correct. now using that okay and right. what's so, that equal to now yeah so equals now inserts the value and then you press f2 and then f9 to convert it to literal so that okay. it sticks whoops it's supposed to do that okay how do i make it Remind me, Meg, how do I make it stick? I thought it was an F2 Oh, I F9. don't do these sheets at all. I'm terrible. Okay, let's see. So can, there's a way to convert this thing into a value. I thought it was, okay, let me look it up just a minute. Google Sheet convert formula to value. Okay, and it says, oh, come on, there's got to be real Google's own help. Cells with formulas into raw text. Okay, here we go. Oh, they make me use paste special. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. Okay, we'll try the top one. I've been spammed just by viewing their, okay, copy and then paste. That's really, that's obnoxious. Okay, so what that really says is I have to do a copy. And then I paste special value only. And that didn't help me at all. So how do I do it? I'll have to think about this more. How about how about we just use a number? How would we how would we do that, Diraj? Because if I put a formula in, mm -hmm. that thing will keep updating. Right? When I when I refresh this page. Oh no, it didn't. Huh. 
So it freezes. Maybe I don't know. No, I, no, no. See, notice it's, it's. Hmm. Yeah. See, every time I do a recalculation, it it updates that cell. So there's I. What I need is in in Excel. I press F two and F nine, and it converts it into the value. But somehow or other, that's not it's not doing that for convert formulas to value. Oh, I know, I know. Let's ask the question differently with function keys. Take all formulas. No, that's no help. It really says control C, control V. That's no help whatsoever. Okay, here's what we want to do. Let's format this as a date. Oh, I don't know, Diraj. Sorry, there's got to be a better way to do it. Yep, no problem. We can figure it out later. Yeah, so let's put it... When we, when we mention it, insert mm -hmm. something that says I mentioned it. A number. Hmm. Let's sure. try it. You okay with trying it? Yes. All right. Okay. So, anything else on GSOC 2023? Um, yes. Little question. So, what what do you think about that contributor who contributed to node label parameters plugin? If you remember, mm -hmm. was there any contribution uh, related to? I mean, how was their contribution? Because I because I'm in touch with her on LinkedIn uh -huh. as well. And that's how um, I got, I, I was asking about her feedback after uh, Act to Fest, and she told me that, hey, uh, it took me a lot of time to figure out which plugin should I contribute to. So that's why I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So was she able to do well with the plugin? So so she's she submitted uh, several, I believe. Let's look at the pull requests that have been closed because I believe, and I think that that contributor was even highlighted in the uh, blog post uh, for Hacktoberfest. Nice. So let's let's double check to be sure. Okay, so three three have been submitted. Two of them have been. Oh no, three. So yes, there are three closed. So three that were submitted and accepted during Hacktoberfest and one that is still pending. And if we look at the conversation here, what you'll see is this, and I'm sh Jagruti. Uh, right. I think that's who you're mentioning, you're referring, right? Yes. So Jagruti yes. asked me, hey, Mark, can you help me understand how to write this test? And I had to say, I'm, I'm, I don't have time right now. I've got to do this other work. And, and she came back and said, hey, can I help you with the other work? And so here was her question. Do you think I can lend a hand with this release? So I've got to release the Git plugin. There's some things I've got to test in it before I release it. I said, sure, here. And so we started a conversation. Here's what you would need to do to help me test. Um, I pointed her to uh, the technique I use, but the technique I use is sort of unique to me. She said, hey, I, I'm on Windows, not on Linux. What can I do? And so I, I crafted, okay, here's what you do on, on, on Linux. Now here's the same thing for a Windows user. So I got the benefit that now I have a way of doing this same kind of testing setup that I use on Windows. And it, it works really quite nicely, actually. I'm really pleased with it. 
and hopefully she'll be able to use it as a way to help test this this very specific um, pull request that I'm getting ready to merge and ship. That is just great. Thanks now, for spending time. Yeah, well, and I think if we look at the blog post, let's see it, if it in the blog post, because the blog post just came out today, Oktoberfest in Jenkins 2022. Chris, Jim, Tiona, Stefan, Kayla. Oh, nope, nope. This one did not get in there. Hers did not get in there. Um, are you sure? Uh, well, no, I'm not sure. Let's look. Hang on. Because I thought I saw Jay somewhere. Oh, you're right. Yes. I take it back. <laughs> there it is. Based in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Jagruti Tiwari, right? Yes. Nice. Okay. Yes, sir. I think that answers my question. Great. All right, so. All right, next topic then was Jenkins elections. I wanted to just highlight that the, we had planned to do elections beginning today. However, as in years past, when we get only one nomination for a, a role, we don't need to have an election. And all the board and officer positions are uncontested. So we have exactly one person to fill each one. So wow. Alex Brandis will be a member of the board beginning December 3rd. Uli Hafner, a member of the board, and our officers, Tim Jacome continues as Reliefs Officer, Alyssa as Events Officer, Vodak as Security Officer, Kevin Martins will be the new Documentation Officer, we'll continue this meeting with me running it, and Damien DuPortal as Infrastructure Officer. Nice group. Yeah, yep. Amazing. Well, and I would have liked to have had more nominees for all of them, but you know, we got what we got. Mm. That's awesome. So, in, let's see, other topics, just so you're aware, LTS for 2.375.1 is coming. Alex Brandis is the, the release lead for it. And Kevin and I will be working, Kevin's doing the, the first work on prepping the change log and the upgrade guide. If you've got a chance to do Jenkins testing, 2.375 is an excellent choice to test. And next Friday, no, no meeting because it's a U.S. holiday. Thanksgiving, nice. That's correct. And so, so in, in the spirit of that, Kevin Martins is going to attempt to assemble a Thanksgiving blog post to thank the companies that sponsor us. Nice. And maybe we should say organizations because it's not just companies, right? It's uh, open the OSU, the o Oregon State University. Major duty, etc. That's data dog and many others. All right, any other topics? No, but um, when we were discussing about those contributors who come in and say that I want to contribute, then they just vanish. I wanted to add that I was one of them because <laughs> last year I tried to add a test for Jenkins configuration as code plugin. And I added that and I took help from you, Mark, as well. And even then I thought that, hey, I, I think this would work and this would get it merged. And when then Tim said that, hey, can you change this small thing to this, 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 which I did not understand at all. So I said, sure, I can do that. And after that, I was not able to do it. And it went month after month, was not able, not able to do it, but then, uh, and believe me, every 
once or twice every month i would think about that pull request for sure <laughs> <laughs> and finally during hacktober fest i thought that maybe let's face my fears and i went back to that pull request and saw that the comment by tim was very uh, like very trivial and i read the documentation and got to know that hey okay this is what he is asking i can do that then i made the changes and the build passed and i said sorry tim for 1.5 year of wait but can you review this again because i thought that if there was an option to block someone on github that would be tim but i'm over exaggerating but yes it get more it got worse so this is the journey well and and it, that's an excellent excellent and very real sequence for many people right they they arrive they they may not stay but they may come back sometime later so very healthy for us to be sure that we're we're welcoming of people mm-hmm. who return we're not angry or bitter at people who leave we accept that mm-hmm. hey if they leave that's okay if they stay that's great and we try to keep persuading people to stay and trying to find ways to help them stay but if they don't stay we're not going to complain exactly this is what i found nice as well so shout out to tim for not being rude all right excellent any other topics for today no nope, nothing from my side okay 